And so within, within a category like Bitcoin, I think there's a lot with, and I think people are going to be doing shows like this about Bitcoin 10 years from now, you know, I just feel like it's such a big topic and there's, there's room for a lot of them, you know, like, I think if Peter McCormick stops this thing, you're going to have Bram for Bitcoin for millennials or Robin, you know, and doing a bunch of kind of deep dive on, on Bitcoiners and the Bitcoin lifestyle and stuff. In this recent 21st century interview with Fred Krueger, we learn about Bitcoin's growth and how social media strategies can influence the cryptocurrency space. Fred dives into Bitcoin's technical and investment aspects, from understanding power laws to navigating institutional adoption. At the time of this discussion, Bitcoin is trading around $63,000, with a 1% increase in the last 24 hours and a 4% rise in the last 7 days. Fred also discusses how his background in mathematics and Wall Street informs his Bitcoin views. Before we get into this enlightening conversation, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Now, let's hear more from Fred Krueger on these essential trends. It's like, when I started, I was talking mainly about ETFs. Then I kind of got it very interested in the power law, and I talked a lot about that. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to hop and jump uh, with, with topics, you know, within Bitcoin. I'm very interested. I talked a little bit about the different aspects of this election on Bitcoin. And both of those are really interesting. It sometimes take a lot, a lot of effort to watch, you know, like, okay, it's, I'm looking at this person. I'm going to sit there and devote an hour and a half of my time to understanding how this person, but if I'm in my car or something, yeah, maybe, maybe I want to learn how, you know, how somebody got into Bitcoin or what they thinking and stuff. So, I find myself watching a lot of those content. I I don't want to do really. I don't think I, that's me. I I'm almost better with wor just tweets. Um, so I think you got to look at what's good for you, right? What is your forte? So I re I you know I like a lot of these things. I've been a supporter of my competition, right? Like so, you know, my competition. But like you know, simply Bitcoin, great, do your thing. You know, Ram, do your thing. It's great. Uh, you know, the world needs more of these things and, uh, you know, whether it's long form video, short form video tweets, you know, power law type stuff, math, math to me as a whole, you know, I think that's a great area too, right? Because there's, there's not a lot of like math people in, in this world. And there's, you know, there's a big kind of education process for like, I mean, I, I, what percentage of math, what percentage of Bitcoiners do you think have an idea of what is a differential equation? You know, I've never heard Michael Saylor say something that's actually political. I'm sure he has political views, but it's good to stay within your zone and to not, not widen it out. Look, I have views on jazz or classical music, but I'm not, I'm not going to like, hey, Fred Krueger, let me tell you the 10 best jazz concerts I went to. No, because... Most people are totally uninterested in it. And so, you know, I think that that's, you know, you need to stick, you know, my radio station is K Bitcoin, you know what I mean? So I like, I like to keep it all Bitcoin all the time, you know, and you're not going to hear me talk about anything else other than Bitcoin, maybe the economy as, as it relates to Bitcoin, maybe the election as it relates to Bitcoin, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of here for Bitcoin. That's kind of my. It's my main interest in Twitter, at least. It's my main public thing. I don't really have a, I don't have a lot of other public things that I really want to talk to. And I think that, I, I think that the minute you start branching out and start dealing with other things, it, it just becomes almost unlistenable because, you know, people want to tune in to Fred to hear what Fred's saying about Bitcoin. Like market's down, what does Fred think? Market's up, what does Fred think? Market sideways, okay, maybe what's for like they want to hear my analysis of it, and you know they they don't want to hear my views on anything else. So I, I'm pretty cognizant of that, and I try to keep I try to keep it kind of buttoned up into that area, even though sometimes I want to I want to say a few other things, but I try not to, and that's that's definitely worked. And you know whether you're doing Bitcoin or something else. 
You know, you should just stick to one topic. As we just heard Fred Krueger discuss the importance of authenticity and social media influence in driving Bitcoin's success, let's dive further into his thoughts on how institutional adoption and Bitcoin ETFs are shaping the cryptocurrency landscape. He explains how his unique background in mathematics and Wall Street helps him navigate both the technical and financial aspects of Bitcoin, providing valuable insights for investors. Now, let's listen to what Fred Krueger has to say about Bitcoin's future in a world where technical knowledge meets investment strategy. I think I have an unusual background for both Bitcoin, uh, for kind of the, where where Bitcoin sits right now, right? Which is, you know, Bitcoin is is somewhat a Wall Street story now. It's an investment story. It's a mainstream investment story. And... Um, you know, we have these ETFs now that are that are that are traded on Wall Street, and you know, but it's also a very technical um, story, and you know, not there's there's not a lot of people really, there's not a lot of people who are kind of from both worlds, you know, from the okay, I understand the technical side of Bitcoin, and and also, kind of I understand investors, uh, and I understand Wall Street, so that's kind of where I came out of, and that's why. I really didn't have, I didn't really have that much to say before these ETFs came out because I was sort of like, okay, well, I own, I own a bunch of Bitcoin, but, uh, and I understand Bitcoin and I'm, I love Bitcoin, but you know, I, I didn't, I didn't really have an angle retail. That's why stock splits still work. Right. I mean, you know, it's, it's not specific to Bitcoin. It's just a lot of retail likes to buy things that are, have low dollar prices. So they can get a lot of them. And that's one of the reasons why things like Shiba Inu were very successful, right? Because they're like, oh, I'll make one quadrillion coins. Okay, great. So somebody can say, wow, I just bought a, I'm a Shiba Inu billionaire. Okay, well, great. Yeah. <laughs> I would say figure out who you are, you know, be as authentic as you possibly can be. Like figure out, what do you bring that's unique to the table, right? And everybody's got something, but a lot of a lot of people, they're 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 just putting out something that's not unique. So figure out what you have that's unique and concentrate on that, right? It might be that you're old, it might be that you're young, it might be that you just moved to El Salvador and you know you're gonna live on Bitcoin next year. You know, that that's a story, right? So it's you know it's it goes back down to the newsroom analogy right you got to write an interesting story you know and you got you got to you got your your story's got to be somewhat interesting now i think what people realize with me is my personal story and we'll get into that is it's pretty interesting you know like why i got a phd in math from stanford right number 1 number 2 i worked on wall street and made quite a bit of money on wall street 6 years of prop trading I, this whole career on Wall Street. Well, that's interesting. Number three, as a startup guy, I had half a billion dollars worth of exits. Okay. Now, some none of them are tools that you use today, right? And all those companies, everything I built was subsumed. You know, that's the way. There's very few products that can withstand, you know, that amount, that amount of time, right? You know, we're not using... AOL very much anymore, you know, or even, even things that were super successful like AOL, right? We're not using anyone. To watch the full interview, check out the link in the description. Fred Krueger provides an excellent breakdown of how Bitcoin is transforming in the digital age, blending social influence, institutional adoption, and technical expertise. We would love to hear your thoughts on some questions. How do you think social media influences the cryptocurrency market? Will institutional involvement drive more stability in Bitcoin's price? We would love to hear your thoughts on these questions. Thank you for tuning in to Only the Savvy. If you enjoyed this discussion, please subscribe, like, and share our video for more more engaging content in the innovative world of decentralized technologies.